Good morning, everybody. Just a follow up to the chat I had with um, Michael Bell, uh, senior. Here we've got the uh, um, Michael Bell was saying that he was quite busy doing, uh, you know, um, interviews and stuff. Uh, and this is the latest newspaper article about uh, the case. So let's share this one with you. This is from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Michael Bell Sr. wants the bullet Kenosha police fired at his son during a fatal 2004 shooting. This is by Bruce Vilmetti. Uh, Michael Bell keeps finding new ways to raise the pressure on various officials to reopen the investigation into his son's fatal 2004 shooting by Kenosha police, details of which he contends have been covered up. His latest move came Monday during a meeting of the Kenosha City Council. Michael Bell made an offer. If the city will finally agree to allow his experts to test a bullet from the shooting, remember it's the, the, the Haag fella, that's uh, the Hague, the Haag, the one that Kathleen Zellner used, from the shooting. He will release the city and its insurer from any future damages he might win in future lawsuits. He's following up with full page ads in newspapers in Milwaukee, Kenosha and Madison, along with billboards and TV spots. And he has been doing that for years to put to press his cause. It's a tactic he has used in the past. However, the offer is good until June the 1st. And there we see this picture of uh, Michael Bell Jr. Michael Edward Bell with his five-year-old brother Carson in September 2004, two months before Bell was shot and killed by Kenosha police. Looks like he's uh, putting a wee plaster on the young lads neither quoting michael bell as cities like chicago minneapolis and philadelphia strain under lawsuits from past police issues i am offering the citizens of kenosha a clear and cost effective way forward bell said in a news release no money just truth in addressing the council Bell brought up Chicago and the more than 190 million it has paid out over the years for the crimes and corruption of former police commander John Burge. Wouldn't Chicago have been smart to take an indemnity deal and reveal the truths of Burge's conduct much earlier? Bell wondered. My own opinion there, it's like an ever rising balloon. They just can't let go. They have to weave a more tangled and intricate web, and it just gets uh, bizarre, uh, ridiculous. Bell also asked Kenosha Mayor John, um, he's a moron, something like that, and Antarerium, 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 whatever. Uh, a complete moron anyway, is if his refusal to release the bullet is vindictive, of course it is, and it's trying to protect himself. He reminded older men the city could still face the consequences of Antimarians. Antiramians. I think I've got it right now. Antiramians actions when he leaves office. Show some courage, he urged the council. Release the bullet. Let the attorneys, to, attorneys, attorneys to talk with the potential of indemnity. At least one older man voiced support for Michael's offer. Holly Kangas said she feared ostracization by her colleagues. She called for the bullet's release. He's just a father who is terribly broken, Kangas said, and he needs closure. The bullet would give him closure. 
Bell said that eight other aldermen have since considered meeting with him individually. He's got my gun. Kenosha police pulled over Michael Bell Jr. early November 9, 2004, as he was arriving home. They say he was uncooperative, which led to a struggle in the family's driveway. As he was being held down over a car, one officer yelled, he's got my gun, prompting another officer to shoot Bell, who was only 21 at the time, in the head in front of his mother and sister. Michael Bell Sr., a retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, maintains no agency has ever conducted a thorough investigation into his son's death. The Kenosha police chief cleared his officers three days after the shooting. Over the years, Michael Bell has appealed unsuccessfully to governors, attorneys, attorney generals, local and federal prosecutors, and other officials to reopen the matter. According to Bell's privately funded ongoing investigation, testing has shown signs of lead in a dent in the aluminium trim around the garage door near where his son was shot. He wants to test the bullet. Kenosha Police Department says it gathered during its investigation to see if it matched the trace lead on the door trim. If so, the finding would support his theory of how police shot and killed his son and contradict the Kenosha Police Department's version. But as we know, uh, Michael Bell has already pointed out, their version has changed 19 times. Father of man killed by police in Kenosha reveals more evidence he says supports new investigation. Bell first sought the bullet in 2020. He sued late last year after the city's continued refuse, refusal to release the bullet. Circuit Judge Chad Kirkman dismissed the case, which is now on appeal. The city argues Bell really has no standing or claim. Bell's lawyer argued the city has offered no explanation for blocking the testing, and whatever reasons it might offer are unlikely to outweigh both Mr. Bell's and the public's interest in an accurate accounting of this tragic incident. Now, the city already has paid $1.75 million to settle Bell's, Michael Bell Sr.'s initial wrongful death lawsuit. Um, he used much of it, yeah. I mean, he said he'd used it all and a lot more of his own to fund efforts to reform police accountability for incidents of deadly force and investigate his son's death and Kenosha officials' reactions to it. And he's, he's had some success. Here Bell has got some results. In 2014, Wisconsin became the first state to require outside investigations when people die at the hands of law enforcement officers or while in custody of a law enforcement agency. The officer who shot Bell, Albert Gonzalez, wrote a book about the incident in 2020. And as we know, Michael Bell Sr. is suing Gonzalez for libel. The case is pending. And as, as it, Michael Bell told us, bizarrely, this guy who's, who's a bit like an Andy Colburn, is now running for sheriff of Kenosha County. Um, it is bizarre, isn't it? it? It's a way of trying to protect himself, himself and the other people involved in the corruption. Now, the officer who initially stopped Bell and yelled, he's got my gun, during the struggle, Eric Strasbourg, 34, killed himself in 2010, a few months after Kenosha settled Bell Sr.'s wrongful death lawsuit. In 2017, Michael Bell Sr. released a 20-minute documentary about the actions he believes officials took to cover up what really happened when his son was killed. Bell believes Strasbourg's gun holster had caught on the outside mirror of the car, making him think someone was tugging at the weapon. Physical evidence from the scene contradicted the Kenosha police narrative of what happened. Among the assertions that were questionable was the fact the younger Bell was shot in the right side of his head, not the left, as police first said. A reenactment later by Kenosha police that tried to account for the head wound still left contradictions with 
other evidence, such as the location of the spent shell from the officer's gun. In 2018, Michael Senior sought to have a John Doe hearing into the case. A Racine County judge in 2019 denied the petition, even while noting contradictory evidence regarding where Gonzalez and three other officers were positioned during the shooting. So there's Officer Strasberg, Lieutenant Kruger that's got hold of Michael and this guy Gonzalez. Um, Officer Weedner and Kim and Shante Bell. The Kenosha Police Department account. This graphic depicts where people were located when Michael Bell was shot, according to Kenosha Police. Physically impossible. This is the witness account. With Officer Gonzalez coming between, moving over, shooting him in the head. This is the witness accounts. This is how Michael Bell Sr. believes people were positioned when his son was killed. He says physical evidence supports the version. And of course, what he's wanting is he's wanting the, the garage door, which is around here, has, has got a clear <laughs> bullet, um, has hit it. And by testing the, the bullet to see if it's got any of the trim from the um, garage door or the other way around, if the garage door lead, the traces of lead are the same as the bullet, then we have a, a reliable match. So that really is the reason it's so, so important. Okie dokie. Um, now I must admit, there is a YouTube channel for this um, case. Um, and there is, as I say, this, this like 20 minute documentary. So I will include the link to this article um, and also try and get you the link to the, both the YouTube channel and the specific video. Anyway, um, and if I have time later today, I'll complete the uh, Eric Ozy, Professor Leo chat. Um, and also, I was looking at some more of this, this great book to see what, what other bits are of very keen interest. Anyway, uh, I think that will do fine for today. We'll catch you all soon. Bye for now.